Hey everybody, this is David, and today I'm going to be reviewing the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Since the new movie is coming out, I thought, you know, why not do something a little bit different? I've been reviewing a lot of new movies, and I'm, I think I'm ready to start reviewing older films. And what better way than starting with the first four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies? I think this could be a lot of fun, and... Uh, it's always fun to go back and watch old movies, I think, especially when it relates to a more newer film that's coming out pretty soon. So as usual, let's start with the pros. I really like the dark tone that this movie sets up. I really, I, I think it's very different at the time, especially since, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are, are usually looked at for kids. And it's kind of sad that at the time, a lot of parents complained about stuff like this. I think nowadays parents are more like, okay with, with the darker tone superhero movies. And it's too bad this movie didn't come out today because I think it would have been more well received. But um, the, tone, the tone really was a cool step in the right direction at the time. Uh, the Shredder, for an example, is... To me, Shredder is one of the best villains um, ever in a superhero movie. And I think it's because I remember when I saw this movie for the first time when I was a kid, Shredder scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I remember that scene where Shredder smacks Splinter. Uh, that scene had me running upstairs to my mom when I was a kid. I, I was literally scared of the Shredder. And um, that's what makes some of the best villains, I think. If a villain can scare you, um, I think that is the testament of a true villain. Because even Jack Nicholson, if you watch the Batman, uh, the Tim Burton Batman documentary, Jack Nicholson even, scare, uh, even says that he knows the kids love a villain that, can, that, that scares them. And the Joker was one of those villains at the time. And, uh, you know... Same thing with the Shredder, man. I think the reason Shredder is so effective to me was how scary he was as a villain. Another thing I want to mention that I mentioned in a previous video, for more for jokes, that I, I over-exaggerate a little bit on it, but it is cool to see Sam Rockwell in this, in this movie before he became big, you know? Um, <laughs> if, if you want to know the whole deal with Sam Rockwell, just click on the link. I'm, I'm going to put a little bubble at the bottom of the screen here and you can check it out. Uh, the cast in this movie is pretty good, especially um, Judith Hogue as April O'Neil and um, Elias Kotis as uh, Casey Jones. And I don't know if I pronounced that name right, but um, these two to me are definitely the stronger actors in the movie. I, I think some of the other actors are pretty good too. Um, but definitely April and Casey. To me, those are the two human characters, and you needed them for the audience, I guess, to relate. Um, I, I don't always believe that you need characters to relate to while watching a movie like this. I think when you're going to see a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, you're going really for the turtles. But April's always been a huge part of the turtle franchise, and so has Casey Jones. So you kind of, like, accept them. And um, the, the two actors, you know, I, I, I really think, especially um, Casey Jones, I think uh, you see him, he's been in a ton of movies. I can't, I saw him recently in a film, a more uh, newer film. Anyways, but, you know, you, you see them pop up in other movies now and then. So it shows that, okay, their acting is not a fluke. They, they were really good actors for those roles and they are good actors in general so and you know going back to judith hogue i obviously she's a much better april than you know a current actress that's uh playing april right now it's not all about the looks everybody it's not all about the looks um the plot really focuses heavily on Raphael, making the other three turtles kind of like the back um the the backup singers i guess if you will uh not that it's a bad thing i think leonardo michelangelo and donatella are still fun to watch but obviously i think the the movie knows the story knows that Raphael is the more interesting of the turtles because he's like the rebel like wolverine and um 
he can go out on his own and, and do his own things and get into trouble more than the other turtles. Where Leo is more like, he's the leader and he's like, I'm going to stick true to what Master Splinter says. And Donatello, Donatello's the genius and Michelangelo's the um, the wisecracker. Um, which also brings me to the fact that I want to talk about their looks and their voices right now. I think the voice acting, the voices in this movie are, are pretty much spot on for me. They're not the best. Like, Raphael's voice kind of was okay with me. Funny enough, Raphael, out of all of them, is the only turtle to be the same guy that's in the suit and the voice. So uh, I think the actor's name is Josh uh, Pace. Um, another cool thing about Splinter is that he was the voice of Elmo from Sesame Street, uh, Kevin Clash. He same guy does his voice, uh, which shows how great of a voice actor that guy is because it's like you listen to Elmo and you listen to S Master Splinter, <laughs> you wouldn't think that it's the same guy. I noticed a lot of the, the people that are in the costumes, like the turtle costumes and Shredder and even Tatsu, um... They're, they're actually different voice actors providing the voice. And you think, like, why why are you getting a voice actor to revoice like, Shredder and Tatsu also? I, do they speak good English or what? But um, Shredder's voice I actually understand more because Shredder has to sound really threatening and scary. And that's what makes him that way. It's, the voice actor really sounds threatening and scary. So maybe Shredder I'll let pass, but I wonder why Tatsu, like, he, he has a broken broken English anyway, so, like, wouldn't it be okay just to use the real guy's voice, or maybe he didn't speak English at all, I don't know, but, um, it, it was fine, it was cool. Uh, <laughs> Tatsu has some memorable lines, like, I can't remember one now, like, Never lower your eyes to an enemy! <laughs> like, he has these funny lines that so you know it, it worked for whatever reason so uh the cons of this movie um going back on the turtles um i didn't think all the turtle voices were okay or great um donatello was the weakest link for me um i did not like donatello's voice at all he was voiced by Corey feldman who most people will know probably from the goonies uh he was mouth from the goonies um he, you know, I'm not bad mouthing Corey Feldman. I think he's a he's a he's a good actor. Uh, I just think his voice is too recognizable for Donatello, and it really takes me out of the film whenever Donatello and Donatello isn't portrayed as a genius in this movie, or at least it doesn't come across to me that way. Um, Donatello is supposed to be the smart one of the group. Maybe in the comics he isn't. I don't know too much about the comics of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I know from like the cartoons and every other uh, interpretation of these characters, Donatello is always the smart one. And um, Corey Feldman, <laughs> to me, doesn't sound like a genius. And I know when I get to the third film, I'll probably talk about this again. Even in the third film, he did not sound like a genius to me. And it sounded like Corey Feldman reading lines. That's what that's what it was to me, guys. And uh, I know a lot of people might differ on that, and that's cool. But for me, Corey Feldman was not Donatello. I also didn't care too much for the father-son storyline with uh, uh, Charles and Danny Pennington. Um, to me, that storyline was just, I don't care. Guys, we got April and Casey for a human story. We don't need now a father-son storyline put in with the turtles casey and april would have just been fine with me I, whatever uh, i guess we need more human characters to relate to or something like that but um i i didn't care for the that part of the story personally final thoughts i give this a 7 out of 10 i thought the movie is still enjoyable today as it was back then um the quality isn't that great uh but you know I, I i give props to the movie for taking liberties uh on what they could like making the film darker than it actually they probably wanted it to be like i i bet the studio wanted this to be like the cartoon 
and um or maybe not maybe that was just the second movie after the backlash from parents this is why you should never listen to parents <laughs> no no listen to your parents kids yeah this movie is really good uh it still holds up today i think and um check it out because uh, i think some of you especially you younger generations i think some of you guys will will still enjoy what it is um even though it has some of that late 80s early 90s uh feel to it uh i think it still holds up pretty much there there's minor things that make it feel a little outdated but it, it's still a fun movie to watch the action is is a lot of fun it, it's not mind-blowing action this was before you know cgi took over but uh for what it is it's a fun film and i i think i think a lot of people will still enjoy it today as it was back then i think even people that grew up with it like myself i think you'll even have more of an appreciation for it especially when you see how dark the movie actually is um it actually like that fight with the shredder at the end is just awesome to watch it's so much fun um go and check it out guys cowabunga <laughs>